Poetry Out Loud is traditionally a face-to-face -face competition. Students come, there's an audience, it's very big. But with everything that's going on and the fact that IDLA does education in an online format, we were challenged to bring something um, in a format that no one's ever done before. So our very first competitor is Mr. Quinlan Rogue. He's a 10th grader at Lake City High School. He participates in track and cross country and he's an aspiring writer. He writes many poems and short stories and he's currently working on a book series with a goal to be published before he graduates high school. Quinlan, the floor is yours. When I have fears, they may cease to be, by John Keats. When I have fears, they may cease to be, before my pen has gleaned my teeming brain, before high-powered books and character hold like rich gardeners the full ripened grain, when I behold, upon the night-starred face, huge cloudy symbols of a high romance, and think they may never live to trace their shadows with the magic hand of chance. And when I feel they're a creature of an hour, they shall never look upon thee more, never have relish in the fairy power of unreflecting love than on the shore. Of the wide world, I stand alone and think, till love and fame to nothingness do sink. Our next competitor is Kylie Olson. She also attends Canyon Ridge High School and she is a senior this year. She is a member of the choir and is going to play Mrs. Puff in SpongeBob the Musical at school this spring. We have something in common, me and Kylie. We are both big Harry Potter fans and part of the Hufflepuff house. So Kylie, I'm handing the mic to you. The Last Performance by Thomas Hardy. I am playing my oldest tunes, declared she, all the old tunes I know, those I learned ever so long ago. Why she should think just then she'd play them, silence cloaks like snow. When I returned from the town at nightfall, notes continued to pour, as when I had left two hours before. It's the very last time, she said in closing, from now I play no more. A few morns onward found her fading, and as her life out flew, I thought of her playing her notes right through. And I felt she had known of what was coming and wondered how she knew. Our next competitor is Isabel Ariaga. She is a junior at Idaho Fine Arts Academy. She is the director of communications for her school's student leadership program. She enjoys painting, photography, and writing poetry. Isabel? Lines written in early spring by William Wordsworth. I heard a thousand blended notes while in a grove I sate reclined. In that sweet mood when pleasant thoughts bring sad thoughts to the mind. To her fair works did nature link the human soul that through me ran, and much it grieved my heart to think what man has made of man. Through primrose tufts in that green bower, the periwinkle trail its wreaths, and tis my faith that every flower enjoys the air it breathes. The birds around me hopped and played, their thoughts I cannot measure, but the least motion which they made, it seemed a thrill of pleasure. The budding twigs spread out their fan to catch the breezy air, and I must think, do all I can, that there was pleasure there. If this belief from heaven be sent, if such be nature's holy plan, have I not reason to lament what man has made of man? Our next competitor is Bella Fernand. She is a 12th grader at Boise Online Secondary School. Uh, the first part of her senior year has been solely dedicated to online applications, which I, I vaguely remember that. It was so long ago. Um, Bella enjoys painting, and she is writing poetry in her free time. So, Bella, I will hand the mic to you. It is not death, for I stood up by Emily Dickinson. It was not death, for I stood up, and all the dead lie down. 
It was not night for all the bells put out their tongues for noon. It was not frost for on my flesh I felt Sirocco's crawl, nor fire for just my marble feet could keep a chancel cool. And yet it tasted like them all, the figures I have seen set orderly for burial reminded me of mine. As if my life were shaven and fitted to a frame and could not breathe without a key and twas like midnight sung. When everything that ticked has stopped and space stares all around, or grisly frosts first autumn morns repeal the beating round. But most like chaos, stopless, cool, without a chance or spar, or even a report of land to justify despair. Our next competitor is Milania Akers. She's a sophomore at Connections Academy, and she enjoys the simple things in life, like rotisserie chicken, creative writing, history, well-made tea, and a long, luxurious bubble bath. I mean, who doesn't, right? On a daily basis, you can find Milania singing terribly to Broadway musicals, wishing she had been a theater nerd. And if she were an animal, she would be, without a doubt, a squirrel. I present to you, Milania Isabella Akers. Dream of the Phone Booth by Amelia Phillips. My stories told in the misstyles, hesitance, and the non-ends of crank calls in the wires, electric elegy and glass expanded by the moth flicker of filament. I call a past that believes I'm dead. On the concrete, here, you can see where I stood in rust, lashed to the grid. On the corner of pine and idlewood, I've seen a virgin on her knees before the angel of a streetlight and Moses stealing the times to build a fire. I have seen the city fly right through a memory and not break its neck. But the street still needs a shrine. So return my ringing heart and no one to answer it. A traveler whose only destination is waywardness. Forgive us, our apologies, the bees in our bells, the receiver's grease, days horizoned into words. If we stand monument to anything, it's that only some voices belong to men. Thank you. Our next competitor is Addie Verkirk. She's a ninth grader at Gym Prep in Meridian. Her hobbies include reading, listening to country music from the 80s and the 90s specifically, and musical soundtracks. She's participated in her student council as treasurer. She's currently working on some college classes to graduate with her associate's degree. And in the copious amounts of spare time when she's not practicing at Poetry Out Loud and doing all of her school activities, she has time to be an intern at the Idaho Museum in Boise. So Addie, I am passing it to you. One Girl by Safo, translated by Dante Gabriel Rossetti. Like the sweet apple which reddens upon the topmost bough, a top on the topmost twig, which the pluckers forgot, somehow. Forget it not, nay, but got it not, for none could get it till now. Like the wild hyacinth flower, which on the hills is found, 
which the passing feet of the shepherds forever tear and wound until the purple blossom is trodden in the ground. So when I was asked to be an MC for this event, I thought, well, you know, that's okay. I do training every month for our ideally teachers. It's something I'm comfortable doing. I'm absolutely on board. So I got to join this group and got to see how awesome they are. And we had, you know, a few conversations and we did some dry runs to practice and everything was fine. And then earlier this week, there was a minor change to one competitor's introduction. And I feel like it was a challenge because he wrote a poem as his introduction. So I am no longer an MC. Now I have to recite a poem correctly. And my recitation will not be nearly as good as our show tonight. But our final competitor of the evening, <laughs> thank you all, is Adrian Bradley. Adrian Bradley is my name. So now you know Valley View High School is where I go to satiate my conscience with my senior year so full of logic. I wish to stop it so it obeys. During its complacency, I release all my burdens. My burdens hurl toward pins at the end of an alley. As they catch each other, as if asking one another to dance, they each gracefully fail that dance. And as they fall, they each take a detriment to my mind with them. I keep my demons at bay with soothing sound of music, though the scraping of rock and metal is an acquired taste, it is most assuredly one that I have acquired. Free time, my sleep, nor my neighbors can truly be free of the sound, so I hope they have acquired it as well. Adrian, the stage is yours. Thank you. So, I will be reciting God's Secretary by R.S. Gwynn. One second. There we go. Her email inbox always overflows. Her outbox doesn't get much use at all. She puts on hold the umpteen billionth call as music oozes forth to placate those who wait. Then disconnect. Outside, Wind blows, scything pale leaves. She sees a sparrow fall, fluttering to a clock hatch on a wall. Will he be in today? God only knows. She hasn't seen his face. He's so aloof. She's long resigned. He'll never know or love her, but still can wish there were some call, some proof that he requires a greater service of her. Fingers of rain now drum upon the roof, coming from somewhere, somewhere far above her. So I just want to say again, thank you so much to everyone who made this happen, and especially my instructors. I'm just full of such gratitude for, thank you, Quinlan. Um, <clears throat> I'm full of such gratitude for this experience and my, for my instructors. Um, my poet was Emily Dickinson. Um, she's just such a beautiful poet, and I think she perfectly captures in some, some of her poems how teenagers feel or at least a lot of them. I know that especially in the poem that I was reciting tonight, she definitely captured how I can feel sometimes, especially with the stress of college applications, you know, moving away this summer, all that stuff. Um, I learned Emily Dick Dickinson only published a couple poems in her lifetime. 
And that was um, thanks to Jeff letting me know before. That was because there was a lot of sexism uh, during her time and that she just wasn't able to get them published ever. But they were published years after she passed. Um, because of Poetry Out Loud, I've learned that there's other things that you need to incorporate in poetry recitation. I had no idea that you needed to include drama to it, that you needed to include different tones. And just all that stuff, I learned so much, so many things. Um, and I just had such an amazing experience. Um, it definitely was not what I expected at all. I thought it was a poetry recitation, except I got to recite my own poems. Um, but anyway, like this is so much better than that because I've learned so much and it's just such an amazing community. And I wanna say thank you again. Thank you to everyone that came tonight and showed support. Um, and especially thank you to Amanda and Ashley. Okay, so um, just like um, Isabel said, when I first joined, I was applying for scholarships, actually. Um, and I saw, as soon as I saw poetry, I was in. I was like, I love writing poetry. But then I learned what it actually was. Um, it was, it wasn't writing your own poems and presenting them, it was um, reading those that had already been created. And when you write your own poems, you you know the connection to the poem. You know all the backstory and all all the connections, and they're all personal. But I found the exact same connection here because doing research on a poem that I chose, I learned all of the backstory of it. Um, though I couldn't really find any articles on it, I just looked at it just on not really surface value, but as much as you can get from the surface, and that's all you needed to know. So here's what I found. The poem is called God's Secretary, but then I started wondering, why is it written in third person? If she's talking about herself, just say I, or am, or something like that. Be, be a little more personal with it. And then I realized, she doesn't even know this exists. She doesn't even know this poem is talking about her, so who else could this be? Who else could be talking about her as if they were her? They knew just as much as she did about herself. Who is she talking about in the poem? God. He's the one that's talking. He, the, it changed the entire meaning of the poem. It changed from her frustration to constantly answering all these people's emails and never being able to talk to anybody on her own and um, seeing all this happening around her like a sparrow falling and leaves blowing and not ever being able to do any of it because she's um, concentrating on her job. And then when God starts talking, it changes the entire meaning because you start realizing that the things she's talking about in the poem are her. The crow or the sparrow that's falling is being pulled down by an invisible force, gravity, an invisible force that is controlling your actions and you can't you can't see it. The leaves are getting blown by wind, an invisible force that you can't see. What is God? An invisible force that you cannot see. He's, he's sort of like reading her mind, opening her brain like a book, and he's interpreting it for himself. He sees, she thinks he's aloof, that he's never there, that he talks to him, that she talks to him and never gets an answer. And so he's revealing, um, he, well, revealing to himself what people think about him. And he's like, you really think that of me? You really think that I'm never there? And so at the end of the poem, she wishes that there was some purpose to her life. And the last two lines are him giving it to her. The rain comes from the roof. Again, brought down by gravity in a visible force as a sign right after she makes her wish to let him to let her know that he's actually there watching the whole way. And I would never have gotten to even think this through or have an experience to have a connection to a poem that's not mine if I didn't stick around. So I <laughs> I can't appreciate what all you guys have put together enough. So thank you. Hello parents and other spectators, Poetry Out Loud has been an amazing experience for me, so I've decided to share it with you. I got an email during the early fall and thought I would give it a try. 
Real reality was I had no idea what I was getting into. Unlike most of my peers, I don't write my own poems or have much idea of it. Despite that, I gave it a try. All the people here are flat out amazing, especially Ashley and Amanda. Without them, without them, all the meetings and practice wouldn't have happened. Everyone has challenges, but mine was picking a poem. But after a couple of weeks and trying multiple different poems and meetings, I finally picked one. One Girl by Sappho. I didn't think I'd ever talk about one person so much. Much of her work comes from the perspective of young women in her time. They are filled with emotion, not to mention punctuation. While the poem was short and sweet, it was still a challenge to memorize. One thing I found was practice, even right before meetings. Every time I read over my poem, it got easier and easier to remember. No matter how short or long any poem is, it can always be memorized. After weeks and weeks of pra meetings, practice, not to mention getting COVID and missing a dress rehearsal. Here I am, proud of myself and my peers, To any and to anyone who has thought about trying anything like this, do it. You never know what new things await. And to my fellow competitors, you all did great and we will continue to do amazing things. And I hope to see you again soon. Thank you. You all are so great. Thank you so much for sharing your experience. Um, before I worked with uh, IDLA, I was a face-to-face -face teacher. Um, I taught English and like tonight, these are nights that educators like this is this is why we got into education and why we stay and why we just absolutely love it. So um, to all of you who competed and participated and stayed, even though it wasn't what you thought it was, um, you're like you're making our days, too, as educators. So thank you. So we are at the point of the evening where we're going to announce our um, third and second place and then our winner. Um, just to let you know a few things, um, we are, the winner is headed to a semifinal round for the state of Idaho competition. Um, so that winner will continue to compete. So tonight, our results are third place, Winner is Adrian Bradley. So congratulations, we'll give you a round of applause, Adrian. Virtual round of applause, well done. Our second place heads to Bella Fernand. Congratulations, Bella, in second place. And our winner for this evening that will go on to semifinal for the state of Idaho, Melania Akers. Congratulations. So to all of you, thank you so much for the time that you put in to every single poem. Um, as all of us have said tonight, you guys are all winners because you've done something that their adults won't do. So congratulations. Thank you to all of you who have joined us this evening to support these exceptionally young people in in their journey so thank you for coming tonight for participating for giving love to everyone congratulations to the winners and i hope you have an excellent rest of your evening good night everybody